おはようございます。私はルです。And this is the only Japanese I can speak. So the rest of the session will be presented by English. Okay, good morning, everyone. I'm Zolan Liu. And I have to say, my, regular,、uh, my native language is Chinese, so my English is pretty bad. If I say something wrong or something not good, please do not mind my presentation. Okay, this is my first time to Kobu, and I'm happy to be here. And on behalf of all my team to share our research result to everyone here. Okay, this is、uh, today's agenda. The first, I will have a short introduce about myself and talk about、uh, easy thing, the basic knowledge of fuzzing testing. After that, I will list some problem、uh, when we do the LT fuzzing,、uh, we find some problem and how we get over this challenge. At last, I will share the issue we found by our fuzzing, and I also prepared a video demo and response from k o k a n Okay, so、uh, let me introduce my,、uh, myself first. I come from Taiwan, and my Chinese name is Liu Zuoren. I know the Chinese is very hard to pronounce, but you can just call me Daniel. It is much easier to, to remember and to say. And is, I have been 10 years ex experience on security testing and found our security at 2014. Okay, our security has an ISO 7025 laboratory, and our laboratory doing the cyber security assessment service. And our target focus on IoT and ICS, SCADA, and automotive. Now I am in charge of、uh, this testing laboratory. Okay. Our team, since our security, before our security, since 2012, we started IoT and embedded system testing. Since now, more than 200 devices and products we already test. I think maybe 300 will be tested by this year. Okay, so these devices include the access points, IP cameras, smart TV, smartphone, and anything like related to, to IoT. Okay, so we provide a, a testing service. So we use a vulnerability scanning tool to scan known vulnerability. And we also use a protocol fuzzing tool to help uh, uh, to try to find something implement error by their network service, like the HTTP, SSL, TLS, SSH, something like that. Okay, so simple in thinking,、uh, the customer w a n t to do more, they just Not satisfied with the known vulnerability. So, we use the fuzzing test to find something unknown and help them to fix the issues. And what is fuzz testing and what is fuzzing? The simple in speaking,、uh, you just send something wrong,、uh, something m e t a l p h o n e just like a very long string, a very big value, and something m e t a l p h o n e to the target. And we just need to monitor the target's response. Uh, does it respond? If there is no response from the target, it means it may exist a vulnerability. So we can do the more analyze to make sure the target is vulnerable.、Okay. So we have a, a simple proce uh, process uh, about the protocol fuzzing. And in this process, I will also let you know、uh, the most important and some p r o b l e m we, we face. When we do the LTE fuzzing. Okay, so I, I know maybe everybody should be familiar with this process. The first, of the, the first thing to do the protocol fuzzing is build,、uh, building the environment. Because if you like to fuzzing on HTTP protocol, you need the HTTP server. If you like to uh, be, uh, do doing fuzzing on Bluetooth, you have to need a Bluetooth product. Also, you, we want to fuzz smartphone. You also need the LT e environment to do the fuzzing. <coughs> Without the environment, we cannot do the protocol fuzzing. So, you, so this is why we try to build the LT e environment and do the fuzzing test on, on a smartphone. Okay, the next one once we have the, the environment, then we can capture the, the packet from our environment. Especially for those proprietary protocols, this is the only way to get the data and、uh, to, the get, to get the data. For another standard protocol, you can capture the 
take it from our environment, or you can uh, find more information from F RFC document as well. Okay, so this is uh, I have the example for everybody. That this is a very easy in pimple HTTP request and send the HTTP post data to CGI being processed at CGI. And they also uh, this request include uh, include a uh, request line and headers and message body. Okay, so we can in this step. I will use the HTTP post data to describe how to generate the fuzzing pattern. It's just an easy way and a concept. Okay. In uh, when we would like to generate the fuzz data, we actually there are two major methodology to to generate the data. The first one is the mutation base. Uh, you don't need any require uh, no knowledge required. You just need do the bit flipping on your data you you capture, and the other one is the generation base. Okay, for the generation base, you have to know the list protocol. So you have to build a data model to know how many fields, how what kind of data should be used in this protocol. So you have to build a data model and define a template. For each uh, for in this template, you have to define which field you want to do the fuzzing and use your father to generate a lot of data. Okay, so in our LP environment, uh, in our list project, LPE fuzzing, we use a generation base to generate the, the uh, uh, fuzzing data, a lot of fuzzing data. Okay, so third example, okay, this is the, uh, I just mentioned before, the HTTP post to CGI being processed at CGI. And let me see the first, fuzzing pattern, what we can do. Okay, you see in this accept HTTP header, we just change its name to uh, something non ASCII character. Okay, and, and wh also what we can do, we also can change the separate of the header name and its value. So we, the separate should be the colon, but I changed to another non ASCII character. So you can use your imagination to generate your fuzzing data, not only uh, FF, you can use anything you want, anything you can do the testing. Okay, the last example is a real case that we met before, may think maybe three or four years before, we do the router, the Soho router fuzzing test. Okay, this is a very interesting thing. Some a uh, router web interface. They will allocate memory size according to your content length. So some one time, we just changed the content length to a very, very big value. And some some idiot the router will try to unlock such big memory size in their device. And, the si and then their product just crash. So you can, you can change, you can, in, uh, you, if you want to fuzz some data, you can change the header name, you can change the data here, or, you, you can, or just change the header separator. Okay, you, get, you can just use your imagination to generate uh, as much as possible fuzzing data and do the testing. Okay, even we just, uh, we even we generate uh, 1 million or 10 million or more fuzzing data. And next thing, we will try to send this data to the, our target. I think the send data is the most easy way in the fuzzing process. You just need to write a Python script, use maybe request or a Saki and send the data you generate. You can generate the data and save into the file. And read the file by your Python script and just send to the target and check the response by another Python code. Or you can use the command line, just the echo, and you can use the base64 to encode your payload and send to the target by, by command line. Just one command, you can, uh, if you cannot, you don't know how to write a Python, you can use the command line, use the best bash script to do the fuzzing thing. Okay, so after we send the data, so next one, next step, 
we need to monitor, monitor our target to check response when they receive our mail phone data. Okay, actually, uh, there are two kind of uh, uh, methodology to monitor the target. The first one is remote. Mostly the remote monitor is used by cross phone. Maybe sometimes you use the Windows to send the data, but your target maybe is the embedded system. You cannot uh, install the engine on this device. So you have to use the remote monitor. Sometimes you can just ping the target, use SMMP, Syslog, SSH, or anything you can imagination, or some backdoor provider vendor. Okay, if your target is installed on your Linux server or Windows server, so you can use your local monitor to monitor the process. If the, the process crashed after you, after receive your uh, fuzzing data, maybe it means it exists some vulnerability. So in local monitor, you can use uh, the process, you can check the process, service, event, log, or use your, your engine to do, to do that. Okay, once you find, your monitor finds something wrong, you can use analyze, you can try to analyze the glucose, why the product, why the daemon will crash by your, uh, by your mail phone packet. Sometimes just only denial of service attack, but sometimes it's overflow attack, you can try to uh, more analyze to do the exploit. And that step just uh, write a script to try to exploit the vulnerability you found. Okay, there are a lot, uh, already a lot of the uh, famous fuzzing tool like the Synopsys and Beyond Security also have their fuzzing tool. Of course, we also have our fuzzing tool. So in the process I just mentioned, so we have the three major challenge when we do, we try to do the, the LTE fuzzing. Okay, I say, the first one is uh, environment, because I just mentioned before, the HTTP, the protocol fuzzing is easy, because everybody can download and establish a HTTP server or DNS server. It's, it, it's not a very hard, hard, hard job. But if you like to build some radio frequency environment, it is a little bit harder than do the common protocol fuzzing. For, for example, okay, the Wi-Fi, Z-Wave, ZB, Bluetooth, this is such a very uh, common use in IoT device. So already a lot of uh, open source and uh, tools and equipment you can buy on maybe Amazon or on website, you can buy the related uh, equipment to do the uh, 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 radio frequency testing for the Bluetooth, for the Wi-Fi. But for LTE, it's a cellular network. Okay, it, it is a, uh, less information to know how we build a fake, fake station, fake station yourself. Once you, if you have to build a station, then you can capture the data and generate the data to do the fuzzing test. And another thing, uh, LTE is a, a complicated product, uh, compli it's complicated. So you have to find which request and which channel we can use for fuzzing. Not each request, not each uh, function and channel could be used for fuzzing. And last one, how we monitor the cell phone. The cell phone is manu uh, provided by the manufacturer. We can, uh, how, we how we monitor what kind of LTE signal received by your smartphone. This is the, the, the another major challenge in our, in our testing. So how we do the monitor, by remote or by local? Okay, so next one I will introduce how we, to, how we uh, get over this challenge. Okay, the first one, and the building testing environment. So why we do this kind of, uh, do this research? Because one day, the, the vendor uh, manufacturer say, hey Daniel, we have a new LTE product, but they only, have a local Wi-Fi land site and an LTE site. Did you have a LTE equipment? The LTE base station can emulate or simulate the LTE environment. I said, um, actually, no, we don't have the LTE environment right now. But I think it's not the, the biggest problem. 
So we think, okay, we just build a pro uh, build environment and then we can do something more such as like a fuzzing. Okay, so we take a little time to research on LTE network architecture. So this is a very important slide. So first one, you have to know the user equipment. The user equipment means uh, any device, any product which can insert a SIM card, like your smartphone, like your Wi-Fi app, your tablet, your iPad, uh, it's all belong to user equipment. So you, when you, you, you use equipment in the SIM card, it will connect to the InnoB, it means the base station. And base station will transfer, uh, transfer data to the EPC, the backend side, and put your, uh, put your data, tr uh, transfer your data to the internet. So uh, this is our smartphone. So if you would like to build the LTE environment, you have to the build the InnoB and ETP, EPC on your environment. So I think it is not a big problem, but I just uh, Google and find something, wow, it's a really, really big problem. You can see this is the uh, LT base station simulator. It cost 15 million yen. So okay, uh, I think not every, each company have a budget to buy this such expensive device. Okay, and, and also one thing, this kind of product used for the interoperability. It's not used for fuzzing. You, we cannot modify the any anything for this in this device, in this product, in, uh, in this equipment. So, if we want to do the LTE, we can build a fixed station. But if we want to do the fuzzing for LTE, we have to do it myself, ourselves. So we just list uh, some equipment uh, software side and how we view. Uh, you need to use to build the LTE environment. So we can check the UE, the LTE phone, I think everybody have a smartphone here. So this is the most easy thing, uh, easy equip, uh, device we can get. And you have to need a blank SIM card because if we build the InnoB ourselves, the information, the SIM card will connect to your InnoB. So you have to put the data, put the information into your best SIM card. So we will use some software to write information to your best SIM card and use a card reader and software to write the SIM, to write data into your SIM card. And for InnoB, we use the SDR, software, software defined radio, to simulate the radio frequency. So we use the USRP B210 and an antenna to to make the small fixed station. Okay. And for how we monitor the, the cell phone, what kind of LTE signal it receive. We use the QXDN pro provided by Qualcomm. It can help you connect to your cell phone and let you know what kind of data received by your, your cell phone. And to simulate the as InnoB, we use the open source called Open Air Interface. So you can use the Open Air Interface and the USRP to build the in to build the base fixed station. And for EPC, you just uh, you just need a VN imagination. Okay. So this is the screenshot of our testing environment. So uh, sorry if about Chinese war only. Okay. So this in the list. Uh, carrier name is simulated by us, by our security. And the Taiwan Mobile, Far East Tone, Zhonghua, Vivo, this the the real carrier in Taiwan. So you can see my, our cell phone can find our network. And we just click and connect to, it can connect to our fixed station. You also can find the information and status on your Enode B screenshots. Okay, so if your your cell phone connect to our fixed station and it can connect to the internet, so it means uh, your your LT environment is ready. So we can move to the next step to analyze the LT architecture and find a way to do the fuzzing. Okay, oh, sorry. The, okay, so uh, 
uh, uh, open air interface, the LT have like many different channels like BCCH, uh, CCCH, and diff uh, physical and transport logical and a uh, different interface. So actually, uh, okay, you know, you can generate uh, data for each channel, each sub channel you want. Yeah, it's fine. But the QSDM, we we got only support to monitor some channels. So if we want to fuzz to do the fuzzing, we only can generate the data for this channel because we can monitor what kind of data received by your cell phone. Okay. So the next uh, next step is uh, generate the fuzzing data. So this is uh, uh, a open, open air interface architecture. So you can see its architectures, and this is a uh, you know B, and it is EPC. And the most uh, the, the most uh, function will be located in the the you know B R C and M M E application. So we have to focus on this application and just to check uh, what kind of request uh, could be fast and could be monitored. So we take a lot of time to check and to we have a list and list. Um, this list request channel, sub channel, and request is can be fast and also can be monitored by QSDM. Okay, then we take the time try to find which re each request and and to check the open source and source code, and you can find the uh, different the the different functional process BCCH, DDCCH in different file name and different function name. So we take a lot of time to, to check the function, which function and in which file uh, of the source code. So we just we, when we find the source code, the next step, we can just code rewrite the source code. And you we pull our, we can generate our fuzzing data first. Then we use, we uh, rewrite the source code to read our fuzzing data file and just send the data to the target. Okay, so we can start our testing. Okay, this is uh, our fuzzing test based architecture. So uh, you can see uh, we have a device here and connect to uh, monitor by QSDN, use a USB. And we've also prepared a SIM card, the black SIM card. We have to write some uh, SIM card information like ICC ID, MMC, MNC, IMCI, such like uh, this information. And this information are according to your InnoB information. So we have to uh, write the SIM card and insert into your smartphone. And for the and for a fixed station. We use a ESRP to connect to your host OS. And we install Ubuntu on the host OS and running open air interface on host OS. And for EPC, we use a VMware image to simulate the uh, EPC environment. And we also rewrite the open air interface and EPC. We generate the fuzzing data and ask the open air interface and EPC to read the fuzzing pattern we generate, and read the fuzzing pattern, and send to the target and monitor the device status and response. Okay, uh, this is the uh, user equipment we we do the testing. We choose the uh, LG Google Nexus Five, and the only thing you have to pay attention is the processor. This processor is uh, made by the Qualcomm S800. Okay, why processor? Because the LT signal will process by modem, and modem are integrated into your processor. Okay, and let me see the, the real environment. That you can see it's uh, not a, such a difficult thing to do that. The only one computer, and we can do the EPC and run the InnoB on host OS and connect USRP by USB to simulate the fix station and connect to your user equipment to monitor by our QXTM. Okay, so in our, uh, we just uh, rewrite the source code and ask the open air interface to read the fuzzing data from the file. 
and you can check the QSD and log. So you can check uh, the mess what kind of message you type received by your smartphone, and what time, packet length, and the payload you send to the, the target. So we can use the QSD and log to check what kind of data, what kind of payload received by your smartphone, what kind of uh, message can make your device no response. Okay, so okay, let me see our fuzzy result. So when your uh, device connect to our back station, if your device, your smartphone, use the Proton 800, okay, it may be vulnerable. When, they, when the smartphone receive the message, the authentication message code 07, uh, start with 0754, this is uh, used for the authentication reject. So you can just send a single pack called authentication reject. Then you can uh, make your smartphone to emergency call only. Even you switch on, switch off to airplane mode, still emergency call only. The only way to back to normal for your smartphone is uh, reconnect to a ne uh, reboot your smartphone, then your, your smartphone will be, be back to normal. Okay, so we have a, a video demo because it's very hard to do a real demo, real equipment demo uh, he, uh, here. Okay, so they have three parts in this video. Okay, uh, this is the first part. Okay, so this you can see now is a, uh, airplane mode on and we switch off, it connect to our base station. So you can see the LT signal con uh, connect to 20893, it's our fixed station. So now we can make sure the base station is work. Okay, the LT, your smartphone can connect to the fixed station. Okay, so we switch to airplane mode again. Okay, so the Part two, so we reboot the fake station and try to send the fuzzing data we found. The authentication message start with 0754. Okay, we just uh, check the log and to uh, act, uh, run the ENOB and ETP server again. Okay, just take a little time to do that. Okay, so the EPC and ENOB are ready. So the last part is we will check. We now we will switch off the airplane mode and let the mobile phone connect to the fixed station. Okay, so you can see the different response. It changed to the sorry about Chinese. It means emergency call only. Okay, so. We just t switch off airplane mode and connect to our fixed station. It responds emergency call only. And even you switch on airplane mode and switch off again, it st still also tell you emergency call only. Okay, so the only way to back to normal, you have to reboot your device. But reboots should take a long time, so let get it faster to be up. Okay. We reboot the device, and we switch off the airplane mode again. Okay, it can it can come reconnect to the internet again. So in our fuzzing, we find the the single pack we can do the fuzzing, and just one pack it can make your cell phone change. Uh, only emergency call only. So we also think uh, if I am the attacker. How can I use this vulnerability and what is a texting scenario? Okay, so we can imagine that uh, this cell phone connect to the real LT base station like NTT, Docomo, and popular uh, carrier in Japan. So we can think if we locate in the small area, small room, just like this room, if our base station is much powerful, their signal is powerful than real carrier environment. The signal is much powerful. So maybe your, your 
device will connect to my LT station. Then I just send the signal, the, the mass authentication message to the device, and device will emergency call only. Even like go to the real, go back to the real LT environment, they maybe still emergency call only. They have to reboot their smartphone. Okay, we test uh, not only uh, Google Lattice 5, we also test for the Sony the Xperia Z3 Plus, uh, Asus Zenfone 3, and Asus Zenfone 2. For you can see the different the uh, Qualcomm process we test. And we found the Qualcomm S800 and Qualcomm S810 also have the same vulnerability, just receive the authentication reject message. The device will turn into the connect, disconnect emergency code only. Okay, we also list uh, um, this device because they all use uh, Snapdragon 800. So it means maybe these devices are also vulnerable for this, uh, also vulnerable. And uh, these devices are all use Snapdragon 810. Okay, it means, yes, it may vulnerable. We did not test each device because uh, we are a new startup company. We don't have too much money to buy each cell phone to, to do the testing. So, but I, we still report this issue to Qualcomm. So we found this issue at last December and we sent a mail to Qualcomm and, and they say, oh, they, I, th I think it's not the vulnerability. I, we always, every time we send the the information to the vendor, different vendor, they always say it's not a vulnerability. Okay, we just explain how we do a test and they have uh, more research to and analyze the root cause. Okay, let's say, okay, Qualcomm aware some older mod Qualcomm model uh, really have this bug, but they, ha they think that it's already been fixed in the newer model, maybe A30, A30 or A50 in the newer Qualcomm processor. They already, they also, they say they also uh, released the page about this issue to, to another manufacturer, but not every manufacturer will install a patch. So if you're, if you're a vendor, your OEM do not uh, release the page or update your smartphone, your, maybe your smartphone will be vulnerability by this issue. Okay, so still some, pro still some products uh, vulnerable for this issue. Okay, so the Qualcomm also uh, uh, give you an explanation and why the single packet will cause the, the device only, emergency code only. They say in CGPP specification, they say the uh, authentic uh, authentication message should be do the integration check. Okay, so in uh, but in our case, we can send anything. Uh, just start with zero seven five four. Then the rest of the payload is not important. You can put any data, put anything. So because they do not do the integration check, they just see the zero seven five four. Okay, it will accept receive and process and then your device cannot connect to the network. But in CGPP specification, the UE, the user equipment, your smartphone, your tablet, your Wi-Fi, I guess you discard this kind of message. The message failed to pass the in integration check. Okay, so the Qualcomm did not comply with the specific check and we, f we thought we found this kind of issue and report to to the Qualcomm, okay. So uh, this is uh, our uh, research result. We use the fake station to rewrite the open source and build a fake station ourselves to do the farting test on smartphone. Okay, we also uh, we have to special thanks for the Taiwan National Elan University. They also give us a lot of suggestion and recommendation on how to build a LT environment. Okay, so. I hope everyone liked my presentation uh, because my pre I just said my English is pretty basic. Uh, uh, if you have any question after this session and or after Kobulu, you can just send me a mail or you can 
find find uh find reach me by linking or Twitter. Okay, thanks everyone. Does anyone have questions about my presentation? But if, if uh, I cannot understand understand your question immediately, maybe you can come to me, and we can discuss more. And after this talk, okay, is anyone have problem or question?